Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and the President of the Republic of Korea. Thank you very much. Milani and I are honored to welcome President Moon of South Korea and his lovely wife, Madam Kim, to the White House. Mr. President, let me be the first to congratulate you on your election, tremendous election victory, and also the people of South Korea for providing such an incredible example of democracy for the world to see. It was very exciting, I must say, and congratulations. This morning, President Moon and Vice President Pence laid a wreath at the Korean War Veterans Memorial to commemorate the 67th anniversary of the Korean War. It's a beautiful ceremony. We will never forget that Americans and Koreans bravely fought and died together for a free Korea. To the Korean and American veterans of that war, great people, we are eternally grateful for your service and for your sacrifice. More than six decades after our partnership was forged in the fires of war, the alliance between the United States and South Korea is a cornerstone of peace and security in a very, very dangerous part of the world. The link between our countries, cemented in battle, is now also tied together by culture, commerce, and common values. Together, we are facing the threat of the reckless and brutal regime in North Korea. The nuclear and ballistic missile programs of that regime require a determined response. The North Korean dictatorship has no regard for the safety and security of its people or its neighbors and has no respect for human life. And that's been proven over and over again. Millions of North Korea's own citizens have suffered and starved to death. And the entire world just witnessed what the regime did to our wonderful Otto Warmbier. I thank President Moon for expressing his condolences on the travesty of Otto's death. Our thoughts and our prayers remain with this wonderful family. The era of strategic patience with the North Korean regime has failed. Many years, and it's failed. And frankly, that patience is over. We are working closely with South Korea and Japan, as well as partners around the world, on a range of diplomatic, security, and economic measures to protect our allies and our own citizens from this menace known as North Korea. The United States calls on other regional powers and all responsible nations to join us in implementing sanctions and demanding that the North Korean regime choose a better path and do it quickly and a different future for its long-suffering people. Our goal is peace, stability, and prosperity for the region. But the United States will defend itself, always will defend itself, always. And we will always defend our allies. As part of that commitment, we are working together to ensure fair burden sharing in support of the United States military presence in South Korea. Burden sharing is a very important factor, a factor that's becoming more and more prevalent, certainly in this administration. We're also working to create a fair and reciprocal economic relationship. From when the U.S.-Korea trade deal was signed in 2011, 
to 2016. You know who signed it. You know who wanted it. Our trade deficit with South Korea has increased by more than $11 billion. Not exactly a great deal. I was gratified to learn about the new investments South Korean companies are making in the United States. This month, Shinair is sending its first shipment of American liquefied natural gas to South Korea in a deal worth more than $25 billion. It's great. We will do more to remove barriers to reciprocal trade and market access. We talked last night and today about some tough trade issues like autos and steel. And I'm encouraged by President Moon's assurances that he will work to create a level playing field so that American workers and businesses, and especially automakers, can have a fair shake at dealing with South Korea. South Korean companies sell cars in America. American companies should have that same exact privilege on a reciprocal basis. And I'm sure we'll be able to work that out. In addition, I have called on South Korea to stop enabling the export of dumped steel. These would be important steps forward in our trading relationship. Very important steps. They have to be made. Not fair to the American worker if they're not, and they will be. Our teams are going to get to work on these issues, and they're going to sign a deal that's great for South Korea and great for the United States. Mr. President, I'm thrilled that you are here today and deeply honored that you choose to go to the United States as your first foreign trip as President. I greatly enjoyed our dinner last night and the many productive discussions that we've already started having today. I look forward to working with you for many years to come to strengthen our alliance, protect our citizens from common threats, and deepen the enduring bonds of friendship between Americans and the great people of South Korea. Thank you very much, President Moon. Thank you. Let me begin by expressing my deep appreciation to President Trump for inviting me to the White House and extending me such a special welcome. When I was elected president last month, President Trump was the first foreign leader to give me a congratulatory call. After going through such a tumultuous journey, the Korean people finally achieved victory. The words of the President Trump conveyed the warmth of the American people's hearts for what we have accomplished in Korea. For tribulations and adversity we have surmounted, for freedom, democracy, peace, and prosperity, towards which we have walked together, for all the great alliance has achieved, you gave your consolation and support. Once again, let me take this opportunity to thank you, Mr. President, and the American people. In my first phone conversation with President Trump last May, he came across as a man of determination and pragmatism, leaving me a powerful impression. And yesterday and today, I had a candid and lengthy conversation with President Trump, and I was able to prove myself right. From developing the rock us alliance, resolving the DPRK's nuclear issue, to building lasting peace on the Korean Peninsula, I affirmed President Trump's unswerving commitment, and we were able to build a broad consensus. During my visit this time, President Trump and I were able to forge friendship as well as deep mutual trust. As we endeavor to tackle numerous challenges ahead of us, this will give us a solid foundation to rely on. First, President Trump and I agreed that only strong security can bring about genuine peace. 
through ROG U.S. combined defense posture, including extended deterrence, we concurred to strengthen our overwhelming deterrence. The threat and provocations by the North will be met with a stern response. The gravest challenge confronting our two nations is the nuclear and missile threat posed by North Korea. President Trump and I decided to place a top priority on addressing this issue and coordinate closely on relevant policies. To this end, our two leaders will employ both sanctions and dialogue in a phased and comprehensive approach, and based on this, we both pledged to seek a fundamental resolution of the North Korean nuclear problem. The North Korean nuclear issue uh, must be resolved without fail. North Korea should by no means uh, underestimate the firm commitment of Korea and the U.S. in this regard. I also uh, urge Pyongyang to promptly return to the negotiating table for denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. National security leaves no room for either compromise or concession. On this occasion, the U.S. and President Trump's firm resolve for the alliance is noted with great appreciation. The Republic of Korea, for its part, will strive to strengthen uh, rock U.S. combined defense capabilities, while at the same time, by pursuing defense reform, build up its own capacity to defend itself. As we undertake these endeavors, bilateral cooperation in defense technologies, I hope, will gather further traction. Second, economic partnership between our countries forms an essential pillar for future-oriented development of the alliance. We bo both agreed on this view. Economic growth and job creation will be promoted to ensure our peoples enjoy greater mutual benefits through the collective efforts we committed to make. Third, as we fight against terrorism and other global challenges together, the ROG U.S. alliance, as agreed by ourselves, will be broadened and developed into global partnership. As we move forward, our two nations will work towards establishing high-level strategic consultation mechanisms in diverse areas of, inter areas of interest. To make it happen, concrete actions will be formulated in close consultation. I would like to take a moment to convey my heartfelt sympathy and condolences to the American people and the bereaved family grieving over the death of Mr. Wambier. The raison d'etre of a state is to defend its people. I deeply sympathize with Americans who are saddened that they were not able to defend their fellow citizen. As a former human rights attorney myself, I am keenly aware of the significance of human rights as the universal value of humanity. To make sure such tragedy never repeats itself, our two nations will cooperate with the community of nations to promote human rights in North Korea. I also invited President Trump to visit Korea this year, and he graciously accepted my offer. Mr. and Mrs. Trump's visit to Korea will once again demonstrate not only our friendship, but also the intimate bond our peoples have come to foster through thick and thin. Your visit will become yet another milestone in defining our partnership. I will see to it that myself. Once again, Mr. President, I extend my sincerest gratitude to you and the First Lady for such warm hospitality. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. President, are your tweets hurting are your presidency? Are your tweets hurting your presidency? I gotta make it look